what is up? It is Cousin Ryan, and today I talk about programming. Many times I am asked question, Ryan, how come I have null pointer exception in recycler view? Or sometimes I am asked question, why is recycler view not displaying my data? Except 96.5% of time is actually man who asks question. Anyways, it does not matter who asks question, your cousin Ryan will help you. When you spend thousands of hours building Android apps, you will start to get a special sense for debugging. For those of you who do not have that special sense yet, I will teach you a simple process to solve problems, then we will look at a practical example. The first step is to gather information. Take note of everything that happens around the problem. Does data never display? Does it display once but not update? Does it only happen in production code but not during tests or vice versa? Does this issue occur every time you visit an activity or fragment or only sometimes? The second step is to make logical assertions about the problem. For example, if the data itself is the problem and not the views, we should be able to use the debugger to look at the data just before we bind to a view. However, if a view never displays any data, it might be the case that the view itself has some problems with its XML or something like that. The third step is to test your assertions. Usually the debugger is your best bet, but another simple tool to use is log.d to print out information. You can also start writing unit tests ahead of your production code because you'll catch many of your errors ahead of time that way, although admittedly testing views is not exactly an easy thing to do. I have a problem, many actually, but for the purposes of this video, when I add new items to my recycler view, it does not display them properly. I want you to pay close attention to my thought process because this is more important than focusing on a single problem. Unfortunately, that is all of the information I have for step one, so we can jump straight into step two, make assertions. In this case, there are many things that could be a problem. It could be that the data itself is not reaching the recycler view. It could be that the recycler view itself is broken. It could also be that our adapter is not working properly. Based on those assertions, for step three, the first thing I will do is use the debugger to check on the data. The last class to pass the data to the adapter is my view class, so I will set up a breakpoint there. As we can see here, the adapter is definitely being given data. Now that we know that the data itself is not the problem, we can explore another assertion. For a moment, let us assume that the adapter is working properly, even though we are not sure. If it is, the problem must be with the recycler view. This could be in the view class, of course, or it could be in the XML. From past experience, I know that a common mistake, which does not actually show an error or a crash, is to forget to set a layout manager. Sure enough, it looks like I forgot to do that. Well, that was definitely a problem, but my recycler view still is not working. Maybe the problem is the adapter after all. Before I look at the adapter code itself, I want to see what the state of the recycler view and the adapter is after I create the adapter in note list view. The adapter is not null, which is no big surprise, so the only other thing I can think of to look at is the state of the recycler view itself. This can be done by looking at the actual view hierarchy of this note list view. Wait a minute. That is not good. After a quick look through this class, I see that I have never actually assigned this adapter to my recycler view. Amazingly, almost as if I planned everything ahead of time, our recycler view is actually working properly now. Hopefully that was useful for you. If you want to learn how to use tools like the debugger to look at the memory space of a running application, or how to build modular software architectures like the one you saw in this video, then do consider checking out my beginner Java course called Working Class Java. There are some links down in the description box below or the pinned comment down below for some promotional links which will help both of us out. You become a much better developer and I get to pay the rent doing what I love, which is teaching. Thank you for watching and peace out.